So, my dear Aries, the sun is in Cancer, giving the light to the moon, which is in your sign today. We're going to the right, we're going extroverted, we're going to the full moon, and you are the fourth major arcana, and Cancer is the seventh major arcana. The opposite sign where you get the light from is Libra and you are the Emperor. You are ruled by Mars, which is in the Tarot the Tower. So we're going to look into the Tower. And Cancer is ruled by the Moon. And we're going to look at the High Priestess, because the High Priestess is connected with the Moon and it's neutral. So then we see what the Moon has to tell you and the Sun in Cancer also is wanting to bring to you as a higher emotional intelligence and we see the 4 and the 7 creates immediately an 11. And the 11 is the inner wisdom, the inner intelligence, the inner knowing that creates a portal, the 11. And, and so today we're going to look at what is coming up through Cancer's light. Cancer in the yoga pose is Ashwa Sanjalan Asana. We are searching through our own body the light, the energy of the higher consciousness and you are the meditation because your body part is of course the brain and so meditation is the one and only energy where you look in all four directions deep within you. Now in your deck we see the chariot here as these two lions that pull the chariot and cancer is that loving energy that brings us out into the world and we recognize now that the sun is bringing us through the light through cancer the search for a deeper meaning a deeper love so this today right sun and moon and this moment exists only once a year. And of course, if we include all the other planets where they're stationed today, this moment exists only once in your life. You are the Queen of Wands. Is your birthday between March 12th and April 9th, then she is your court card. If not, look in the description below. I have listed them all there. If your birthday is before, you might be the Knight of Cups. Or if your birthday is after, you might already be the King of Pentacles, right? So have a look. I have everything listed there. As Aries, you are the fighter. You use your horns to access the third eye, the inner eye. And you are the first zodiac sign and connected with the first house of self and identity. Back to the last reading where we had Gemini Sun giving Aries Moon the light. A unicorn is talking about magic. So we are going to look into Mars. Mars in the Tarot is the tower, is the falling apart of things so that new things can be created. And so we have the High Priestess, the tower, the moon, the sun, and in the center, the court card. And we are beginning, of course, with you as the court card because it's important to understand that the court card is who you are in the world, right? And as a queen of wands, I am getting here the three of swords. The three of swords. 
is always that moment where people talk about a relationship, the painful aspect of a relationship. It's in your mind. It's past. Nevertheless, also we talk about a painful energy that is through the world coming into our attention. How we see the world, right? How people interact in this world. And you see here two swords coming down, which is duality. And one sword that's going up, which is unity. And you see in a way the hexagram in here and the keyhole to the three is the empress. Now with the one of you, we have a four and the four is the emperor. And the emperor is then what you are as a major arcana. And the four is I am stable. I understand how things are functioning. Now, this is connected with the constellation Saturn in Libra, and Libra is your opposite sign that gives you the light. And something here is talking to you about how you see the Three of Swords from a more empirical perspective. Because as an empress, sometimes we get pulled into the story. But as an emperor, we become more clear in the way we want to live this story. And so this is the center. This is what occupies you right now as a court card, as a queen of wands, right? As a woman that takes action. And the four, again, is always connected with the four elements, the fourth chakra, so something in your heart is affecting you right now. So we begin with the High Priestess. And the High Priestess is bringing you Taurus, the Hierophant. So you could be, right, here a King of Pentacles, which is Taurus. And here we have the Hierophant, we have the Spiritual Teacher, and the Five is letting you know there are five senses, there are five elements, and there is that wisdom that we gain when we come into a triangle inside of these two pillars. So the two pillars, one, two, is the duality that is crossing here as a sword energy, and then the three inside, right? So the three and the two is then the five. What comes here as a clarification is the Two of Discs. And the Two of Discs is connected with Jupiter in Capricorn. And the two are, of course, the two swords, the two pillars. And now you have two wheels, two babies, twins, and the snake that connects it all. We have here the trees, right? also in a pair and you see that the two is always the duality and that's the most difficult part to overcome right to not get sucked in into duality to be like oh i like and i don't like and etc we need to find the trinity which is the liberation and so the five and the two creates then a seven which is the emotional intelligence of cancer coming to you and letting you know hey have a look, because that's what the High Priestess is bringing you as well, a two. She is the two, she is the duality. And so here together we get a nine, which is a completion. But I wanted to see what is the deck of Alistair Crawley bringing, which is for Cancer, and you get the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups is a sadness, right? And that sadness is saying, well, this is maybe still lingering here. And you see there is a pentagram facing down. And the pentagram facing down is always like an inversion. It's like something is not connected. And you see the two leaves up here. So here you have the constellation Mars in Scorpio. 
and Mars is your planet that is ruling you. And when Mars is in Scorpio, we want to take action, but those actions sometimes don't make us happy. There is a spiritual message to learn everything about heartache and to not be drawn into emotions that are drowning you. So when we calculate it all together, we get first of all here 5-5 five, five portal. And the 5-5 five, five is kind of like two times the 5 speaking about the emotional energies that are pulling you down, that are making you sad. But the sadness is a good one because that's how we cleanse and purify ourselves. So the 10 and the 2 is the 12. Plus, of course, the high priestess, we have the 14 and then the 5 is left. Understand what's talking. Understand why you have this heartache and hear the solution, the five, the five senses. Observe how the five senses observe the heartache and how you get sucked in. Then comes here the tower and the tower is bringing you fish and the fish as you can see is facing the three of swords the half moon and in a way it looks like it's pisces but it's of course just fish the fish and nevertheless a fish is in the water the fish is letting you know become more emerged, not in the thinking, but in the feeling and observe how it is talking to you because these cards have no number, right? But nevertheless, I'm going to have a look what is talking here as a number and it's the number three, right? It's the third animal from the water signs and it's saying restlessness change of focus lost in the current so the fish loves to be subsumed in life's current nothing pleases it more than movement movement and more movement the roaming lifestyle of the fish may be exhilarating for a while but usually leads to weariness and slippery relationships now, slippery relationships, something here is telling me that maybe the tower is letting you know this needs to go. Something is done, right, with the three. So you have a 33 here, and the 33 is very clear. The mastery of someone that has understood how certain energies affect us and so the 16 turns of course into a 7 a 7 and the 3 is a 10 a new cycle can begin and you need to use it what is the explanation for the fish again the five of cups and the five of cups mars in scorpio is bringing you here the starfish wrapped here around these cups and the pearls are spilling and it's facing the right extroverted you are showing your sadness this currency is the sadness and so the three and the five is the eight and in the eight we see that infinitely things are difficult not always easy and your deck is bringing the world to this and the world is the 21 and the 21 turns into from the 20 and the one into a three so there's again a three three here's a three one two three times the three empowerment through power and of course the 20 inside is pluto which is ruling scorpio and so mars and scorpio there is a story that is affecting you in Saturn, right? Because the world is Saturn and Saturn is the finger, is the father figure, is someone that is letting you know, hey, 
understand what's going on here. And it's still connected here with the Three of Swords, right? With the understanding that Saturn in Libra, and here Saturn as the world coming up, it's affecting you. And all together, the 21, the 3, is the 24, the 24, and the 5, is the 29, and the 11 appears here. And the 11, again, remember, the 11 is the inner teacher. The 11 that came here through the 7 and the 4. And the inner teacher knows what's going on, knows what the story is here, right? And so the 11 plus, of course, the tower, which is the 7, so we could have a date, the 7-11 or the 11-7. Observe, watch how the cards are talking to you. I explained to you what they're saying, but you need to put your story in there. Then the moon comes the woodwives. And the woodwives is the 64, and it's the last card in the deck. So the 60s, the 6, the lovers, the hexagram, and the 4, you, the emperor. So you appearing here in the woodwives in this last card, and the 10 when we calculate this together. The woodwives is the adaptability to difficult situations, letting you know that the moon is the 18, the 18 turns then from the wheel of fortune and the eight, the strength into a nine. And the nine is the opposite sign of Pisces, right? Pisces as the fish and that's the 18, that's then as a nine, the completion. Virgo is bringing the completion to the moon. And you are learning here in the 10 and in the 9, the 19, that the sun is giving light to the moon. And it is Cancer that is giving the light to the moon so that you can look deeper into your subconscious. What is the explanation here for the woodwives is the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands are slightly tilted to the Three of Swords. And the Nine of Wands is that moment where you understand something, right? You have gotten through a painful situation because this is the constellation Moon in Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is that action, the Nine, the completion. And of course the Moon, the subconscious, is telling you do keep acting and not getting sucked into the mind. And so the 10 and the 9 again is the 19 and the 19 turns into a 10 and the 10 is a new cycle that can begin. The 10 with the 3 would be the 13 which is death card, right, which is Scorpio and Scorpio came here through the Five of Cups, remember, that was Mars in Scorpio, your planet in Scorpio. It's like, oh, it's too much emotions. It's like, I cannot handle it. Now, what is bringing Cancer is the Nine of Pentacles. And so focus on taking action, focus on doing things, right? So we have here a Nine-Nine portal, and the pentacles is the money. This is Venus in Virgo. And so Virgo is coming and Sagittarius is coming. And so you're learning to be more gentle. You're learning to see that the nine of pentagrams are bringing you a financial success by taking action, by not dwelling in this by having the adaptability, by this is the end, right? It's almost like the moon is saying it's the end. So understand the 9-9 nine nine here and understand that you want to move on. It's time, right? And so that's what the subconscious is bringing you. Two times the 9. Let go, right? It's time to see 
a new cycle. And then the sun is bringing you the growth, the plants. And the sun is the 19, which turns then from the 10, the wheel of fortune, and the 9, like you had two times the 9, the hermit into a 10. And so here the 19, and the 19 is literally letting you know there's a 10-10 portal, right? The sun is helping you to see the plants, is seeing the um future of the world right that there is a growth in the way we think when we're not blocked by these three thoughts right by saturn in libra and so what is the explanation here you come up reversed the four the emperor and when you come up reversed it's like you are really letting go of being this man who knows it all, who can lead, who can actually push people around. And I don't think you want to do that anymore. And so the 10 and the 4 is the 14. And the 14 we know is temperance. The 14 is understanding that you learning, which came up on the position of the high priestess, right? We had the Hierophant, the Five of Cups, the two of pentacles and her that was a 14 and a 14 is the temperance understanding now to find an equilibrium between being a leader but also connected to the environment connected to the growth cycle of this world and your deck is bringing you the king of pentacles and it's very interesting because you have here now the king of pentacles as a court card and here the hierophant as a major arcana so observe right have a look at the birthday because you were the queen of wands but the king of pentacles comes right after you and so there's an overlapping in the dates of the sun and then in the court cards right so this is the message in itself to the three of swords right observe that you can with the four and the two create a six and of course here the 19 becomes the 10 the 10 and the six is the 16 the tower and the tower brought you here so don't run away from things face them observe them notice the sadness right that the sadness is something that came twice so twice the five of cups is ten cups and learn that ten cups is then a new awareness a new cycle in the way you observe your emotions maybe in a relationship or in whatever now the sun is bringing you so you see that you are really learning that the 16 turns into a seven the emotional intelligence through the sun through cancer is bringing you a deep awareness of what's going on what you need to do so that you can overcome this because this is a seven right the seven and the ten is a 17 and that's Aquarius that's the star being a star seeing that things are shining and that you are understanding the message is what is needed and so learn that you have learned your lesson and that it's finished and that you are getting into the emotional intelligence and that you understand more and more that the 17 turns into an 8 and the 8 is that infinite knowledge that brings you the strength a, a real strength to overcome simply anything and when we overcome simply anything we understand that what are we really afraid of right this pain not really we're afraid that maybe we're not being looked at as this terrifying leader emperor but 
that's finished. You are connecting more and more to who you really want to become now in this world. Because the world came. So act upon it. Be like also a king of pentacles who is having the nine of pentacles, right? Who is having the two of pentacles. And so you have 11 pentacles. Again, a symbol that your inner strength is stronger than anything else and that you can simply overcome whatever it is that you need to overcome right now. I hope I see you in the next reading. That's when we got the sun in Leo. Leo is the strength card, is the number eight. And the eight came up. And so the infinite loop of finding your strength through duality, through constantly yin and yang, up and down, inhale and exhale, is what is asked from you right now. And so I thank you so much for being with me. Namaste.